Hey everybody, this is Jake, also known as PanicRev38, and I'm here today to discuss a tool that I developed that helps install and manage custom tracks and MX versus ATV reflex, all from an in-game overlay so you never have to exit out of the game to get new tracks. I'm going to be starting off with a fresh installation of MX versus ATV reflex. So if you've just installed the game, you can follow along step by step with me and get up and running in no time. So let's get started by copying the link from the description and post pasting it into your web browser. This should download the file. Chrome says that it's not a commonly downloaded file and may be dangerous. I'm assuming this is just because it's a brand new app and hasn't registered with their system. Um, it's not a virus, so you can just press keep. And I've actually included a link to GitHub where you can view all the source, uh, check it out yourself if you want or make any contributions. <clears throat> so I'm going to run it. Uh, again, Windows 10, not recognizing the executable. So let's just press more info and run anyways. So here we're at the typical Windows installer. Down here you see you need 10 gigs of free space. The app itself is only around 600 megs but you do download a lot of track files and a lot of track preview images into the folder where the application is being installed so it's good to have at least 10 gigs of free space on your hard drive where you're installing the application to. So we're gonna continue create the desktop shortcut And I just realized I actually selected my C drive, which is limited on space. So I'm going to go back and select my G drive. Good to go. All right, install complete. Now we should see the shortcut on our desktop. There it is. Let's run it. Now it's going to automatically detect the reflex install path. It's going to automatically install everything that you need to run custom tracks. And right now it's downloading preview images, which is what the in-game overlay track list uses to display the, the previews to you. Once the preview images are complete, it's going to install random tracks for every slot and every race type. So you're going to get random tracks and for nationals, random supercross tracks and random free ride tracks. And this is just to make it so whenever you boot the game, you can jump straight in and play a custom track without having to install anything yourself. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip to the end of this process. This is a one-time setup, so you won't have to go through it the next time you run the app. Okay, the install process is complete, so let's boot up Steam. One thing to note, in the current state of the application, it only supports 1080p resolution. So just to make sure that you're in 1080p, let's run the settings application. And just verify that you're in 1920 by 1080. One more thing to note before we boot into the game, if you're using OBS to stream to Twitch, and you're not seeing the overlay come up, try setting your game capture settings to not use anti-cheat compatibility hook and to capture third-party overlays. All right, at this point, we should have everything we need to boot the game. Once it loads, if everything went according to plan, you should see the overlay on your screen. At the time of this recording, there is a bug where occasionally the, the overlay doesn't come up. All you need to do is exit out and try to, try to reboot the game until you see it pop up automatically. Um, once the overlay is hooked, you can get in and out of it by pressing F11 on your keyboard, um, which is also noted here at the top in case you forget. On the left here is all of the tracks that are available to you. And this list is going to be ever growing, uh, assuming that the 
community remains strong for developing tracks. Um, every time somebody adds a new track, our server will automatically detect it and make it available to you for download. So you never have to go to uh, an external website to, to get your, your custom track. All tracks are refreshed on a 24 hour basis. So if it's not available, uh, the first day it comes out, it should be available the second day. Uh, over here on the right are your installed tracks. You got your free rides up here, your nationals, your supercross. Before I move on to this side, actually, let's look at the functionality to the left. So here is obviously your preview image. Uh, you have your name, your slot, the type of track it is, the author, date created, number of times downloaded. This is the a global amount. So each time somebody installs the track by pressing this install track, select a track button, it'll download. And also it'll increment if people download random tracks. Um, and you can also see your favorites. Each one of these columns is sortable and filterable. So if you only are interested in nationals, select the national slot. If you're only interested in individual slots, say you have most of your slots picked out already and you're only interested in seeing tracks that are in slot 4, so you're only looking at nationals that have slot 4. Um, you can sort by, by default we're sorting by slot, you can sort by each individual column. So if you're interested in, in uh, specific creators tracks, you can sort by the author. And when you want to install the track, all you need to do is select it and say install. So before I, I do this, notice that my slot three over here is this BRMX round three. And this is a slot three national track. So when I install this from the server, I expect it to show up here in my installed tracks list. And there it goes. Now Elevate MX is in my slot three. And the status of every operation that you do is recorded in this log. If there's any errors, you'll see it here. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the right side of the screen. Um, so you already know these are your installed tracks. If you play a track and you decide that you like it, you can favorite it, add to favorites. This will mark it as true. You'll also see it true over here. And then you can sort by your favorite track as well. So once you have a list of your favorites, you can just sort by them and only select your favorite tracks if you would like. <clears throat> you can share your tracks, which I think is a, a very large benefit to this tool. Say you're playing a multiplayer lobby and you have five people in your lobby. Once you have the set of tracks that you want installed, all you need to do is press the share track list button. It'll generate a random name for you. Go fish star Fox is the name of this one and post it to this publicly shared tracks list, which everyone that is running the tool, when they press F 11, they'll see your track list. They can select it and oh, that's a typo there. I need to fix that. They can select that and say, install selected track. <clears throat> Um, this makes this saves a, a ton of time and uh, a lot of headaches because so often times when you have a lot of people in a party, there'll be a couple people that don't hear the track or they forget to install a track and then people are writing it on different tracks and it's just a mess. Um, but this is going to take all of that headache away. One person can create a track set and everybody else can install it and, and they're ready to go. There is one important rule you need to follow when playing multiplayer to ensure that everybody has the proper tracks synchronized. Um, and I'm going to get to that later in the video, so be sure to, to tune into that. Okay, at this point we should be able to do a track, so let's go test one out. Let's try this Elevate MX. It's going to be in slot 3 and it's going to be a national track. So I'm going to press F11 to hide it. Oh, one thing that I do want to cover. Um, at the time of this recording, when you select stuff in this menu, 
it's actually selecting things in the game as well. I, ha I haven't implemented any functionality to take away input from the game while this overlay is up. So you heard it back there. I just clicked something in the game when I clicked on this track. Um, so I accidentally went into my career, it looks like. So occasionally you're going to run into that. Um, I haven't found it to be too much of a hindrance, but look for an update in the future to, to fix that issue. Okay, let's go play a track. So yeah, Elevate MX Slot 3 Arcade. Ready slot three. And I'm not going to play the whole track, but this is just to show you that everything is working as expected. And just for completeness, I'll show that you can switch to a different slot 3 national track without having to shut down the game. Uh, let's go to... Let's try out this one. Install selected track. It's going to download it from the server since it's not already cached on our hard drive. And we're ready to go. So hide the overlay. Go to nationals. Slot 3. We should have a new track. There it is. Simple as that. Okay, I'm going to quit out of the game and get into the edge cases that can come up during multiplayer matches. One rule you should always follow when playing multiplayer is to have everybody install the next set of tracks that you plan on playing during the loading lobby of the last track in the current track set. Now you might be wondering, if I install new tracks before I've finished my track set, isn't that going to overwrite my last track and make me play whatever I just installed? And the answer is no. And I'm going to explain why that is with a short animation. Hopefully the visualization helps understand what's happening behind the scenes. So at the top here, we have cloud storage. This is where the tool pulls all of the tracks from. On the bottom is your computer. On the left, we have your folder where Reflex is installed. On the right is the running Reflex process. So I've got a, I'm creating a multiplayer lobby here. Um, I haven't loaded a track yet, so let's press F11, pull up the overlay, and I say, okay, I want to play Glen Helen. That's in slot two. So press the install button, and that sends a message to the server saying, hey, please give me Glen Helen. The server responds, here's Glen Helen. I put it in slot two. But notice at this point down here in your RAM, you don't have Glen Helen loaded. The server copied it to your hard drive, but the game doesn't know anything about it yet. But as soon as you press continue, that's going to trigger you to load the data from slot 2. So you press continue. Boom. It loads the data, and now you have Glen Helen sitting in RAM, ready to go. And you can see this visually in the game by this little loading bar that comes up. Whenever you see that, that's the game loading the data off of your hard drive into RAM. Now, if you're following the rule at this point, because I'm only I only have one track in my track set. Usually, you know, when you're playing, you have you know five tracks, so you wouldn't be doing this until you got to your fifth track in that case. But since I'm playing one track at a time, I am in the loading lobby of the last track in my current track set because I'm only playing I'm only playing one track. 
So at this point, I would say, hey, everybody in my party, I'm going to create uh, a new track list. And I'm going to put uh, crack wards in slot two. And I'm going to share the track list with you guys. So I install it. Give me crack wards. The database returns crack words to my slot two. It's sitting on my hard drive. I close the overlay. And notice at this point, some people might think, oh, I just overwrote crack words with slot two, and I haven't even played slot two yet. Uh, so I'm not going to get to play Glen Helen. But that's not the case because we never triggered the game to load the data off slot two again. Glen Helen is sitting in memory. We never we didn't have that continue button, remember? So Glen Helen is sitting in memory. And <clears throat> so at this point, you've got crack words installed on your hard drive. You tell your buddies, hey, I have a track list posted, go download it. And everybody goes and downloads it before you start the match. You start the match and you load into Glen Helen. Cool. Next time around. You get back to the screen once your race is over. You select beta slot 2, press continue. Remember, track words was in your slot 2. As soon as you press that continue button, that's the trigger to load from your hard drive. Boom. Copy track words from slot 2 into your RAM. You're in the loading lobby. You've got the track loaded. Everybody's got it loaded, ready to go. If you plan on playing another uh, single track, select your track in the loading lobby and you know rinse and, rinse and repeat <clears throat> now you might be wondering why do it in the loading lobby instead of doing it on the fly when I get back to this screen well if you've got a party with you know five people in it there could be timing issues and let me explain that a little bit so let's say you go in install Glen Helen. Server, give me Glen Helen. I've got it copied on my hard drive. And let's say you share the track list at this point. You haven't pressed continue yet because you haven't shared the track list. But let's say you share the track list. Say, hey guys, I posted the track list. I've got Glen Helen loaded. Install it. And then you press continue. But not everybody in your party was quick enough to respond to download Glen Helen on time. And when you trigger the load for yourself, it triggers for everybody else too, because you're the party host. As soon as you decide which tracks you're writing, everybody else automatically follows suit. Everybody else's games automatically pull whatever data is in slot two. So you already had it installed, but you know, slow Joe, didn't download the track in time before you press the continue button and now he's got whatever was in slot 2 before you triggered the load so you're gonna have him playing one track and you playing another track so that's why it's always best to do your install during the loading lobby of the last track in your current track set because it gives people plenty of time to install now you could you could say um, <clears throat> hey guys, I posted the last track in the current loading lobby, or in the last loading lobby. Go start the race, and your buddies could download the tracks in the middle of the race if they wanted to. Like, if they were slow, okay, like, oh man, I forgot to do it in the loading lobby. They can download the track in the middle of the last race. As long as they do it before you press that continue button, you're golden. So I hope that helps clear the air on the rule. Uh, if it doesn't, just follow the rule blindly because it's the way that you should do it. Thanks for watching.